um, when it really is live because I'm pushing live right now. And if anybody can do the tweet with the screenshot, that'd be awesome. There's, it's just a little too much for me to handle trying to do all that. And make a uh, screencastify, yeah, tag screencastify, Edpuzzle, hashtags. Um, So we are live, just so you know, and um, Dana, whenever you're ready. All right, so awesome meeting you guys today, and I'm sure um, we're going to have a great show. We're going to learn all about uh, Screencastify and Edpuzzle. So, um, Stella, if you want to start us off today, um, we will start off with you. All right, let me share my screen. Ladies, hey, hang on one sec. The YouTube live stream is saying there's no audio. Oh, it should work now. Hi, can you all got hear it me? now? All right, we got it. Good. <laughs> That's simple. Okay. So I'm Stella doing my Rosalind. So I'm getting here and we're going to get started. All right, I'm going to share my screen. So we're going to go down the dungeon of screens here in a second. I love that you okay. said the dungeon of screens. That's awesome. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> um, they're crazy. <laughs> okay. So today I'm joined by Rosalind. We're going to be talking about two of the best instructional tools out there for EdTech companies. I say the best because they're reliable, they've been around forever, and we know what they So we're talking about Screencastify, and we're talking about Edpuzzle and how to act smash those together. So, yeah, there's our information. Rosalind's from Odom, and I'm from Franklin County, and we're happy to be here with you. We're going to start off by talking about Screencastify, like what is it? And I always say that Screencastify is 100% magic. It takes anything in this world that you want to share on your screen and you can make the best videos. So phenomenal. So um, it's a Google Chrome extension. This is what it looks like when you add it. That little icon right there. It records your screen and allows users to do a voiceover at the same time. And it also will allow you just to use it as a web camera if you want to. Your videos can be saved on Google Drive or YouTube or both. And we're going to talk about those. For app smashing directly with Edpuzzle, um, it's going to be best if you use YouTube. So just keep that in mind. We'll repeat that later on. So I figured for Screencastify, what I would want to do is show you all how to get it and how it works. And then I'm going to let Rosalind 
talk about how Edpuzzle works, and then we're going to talk about some ideas on how you can use these two amazing tools together. So to get started, if you are unfamiliar with um, Screencastify and how to get it, you want to go to screencastify.com. When you get to Screencastify, and if you don't already have it added, it's going to say Add to Chrome, and you're going to click on that. So the first time that you sign in, it's going to give you a few prompts. You do need to sign in with your Google account. The only reason why is because it needs to be able to talk to your drive in order to save your videos. And Google owns YouTube, so it also needs to be able to talk to your um, YouTube account. So after you add it, that little extension pops up there. I'm going to come back to that in just a second. Okay. Um, so follow all of those prompts. After you get it added, it's going to be there. And don't forget, it is completely safe to fill out off your Google account. So here are some keyboard shortcuts that I highly recommend. I'm going to share these out. Can we put these in the show notes? I'm sure that we can. Um, but Screencastify has a ton of keyboard shortcuts to make it to where you don't have to click on this icon every single time that you want to start and stop video. So here's what Screencastify looks like when you're using it. You click on the icon. It opens up. Oh, sorry. This is where I said that you need to sign in with Google. Okay, so now we're rolling. This is the first time that you click on it, it's going to show you all of these different options that you can use. Wait, wait. Okay, there we go. Um, see that it tells me that I have a five minute limit per video. They have opened this up to where you can apply to have their premium. They're absolutely free right now. I'll get you a link to that. Um, but you get unlimited five minute videos anytime. However, for now, they've opened it to where you can get unlimited time and unlimited videos. Okay, so you have three options when you are recording with Screencastify. You have the browser tab, which will record everything from here down to here. So it will record from this dock all the way up to where your bookmarks are. If you change tabs and that is um, what you have selected, it will not record the tab that you switched to. It only records that tab. So that's really important. I usually leave mine on desktop only because sometimes I want to minimize my browser. Like I have a picture on my background that I want to show or I want to toggle between multiple tabs. So that's what you want to use to do that. And then the webcam only is exactly what it sounds like. It's recording your face. If you have a document camera or a web camera or whatever that you want to use to record your hand or you want to show yourself writing on a whiteboard or whatever, you can use that. Underneath, you do have microphone and embed web camera. Notice how when I'm talking, my microphone, like the little green bar is jumping up and down. That means that it is picking up my voice. If that's not jumping up and down and it stays gray or white, you want to make sure that you click here and select one of your microphones. Um, and then you can toggle on and off the embed webcam option. And if you do that, it's going to put a little bitty camera right down here in the bottom of your corner. So here's what it looks like when you're recording. You click record. It'll tell you to pick which screen that you have or which screen you want to give it the option to record and share. It will ask you that every time. Gives you a nice little countdown. So pretty. And now it's recording my screen. So to get it to stop, <laughs> I click again. And I just made my whole video. And when I click my icon again, it gives me the option to delete that video if I don't like it. I can restart. I can pause and I can stop. When I hit stop, it takes me to my video page where I can give it a title and I can open up an editor. 
I can listen to what I just recorded. And then over here is where all the magic is, really. You can copy this shareable link to send and it saves it directly to Google Drive. You can push it directly to Google Classroom automatically. You can publish to YouTube. And then you have some more um, detailed options here. Those are all really, really cool. I also use this download feature a lot. Right now we're in remote learning and NTI learning. And if you have a student that you know for sure does not have internet at home, they can download these videos and save them to their Chromebook if they are able to get the internet access somewhere and then be able to see those at a later time. You can also export um, as MP4. You can export the audio. Or one of my favorite things is making GIFs or GIFs, however you want to say it. So um, really, that's all there is to Screencastify. Other than it saves all of your videos um, in a folder in your Google Drive. So if you were to go there and just look for Screencastify, you're going to see a folder completely filled with your videos. You can also click on the extension itself and click this little icon here with the play button, and it will take you to all of your videos that you've recorded. Do you have any questions about Screencastify so far? Stella, I love that uh, it goes automatically into your drive. That's a big help because you don't have to worry about storage on your device. That's awesome. Exactly. That's one of the most beautiful things. Um, I did forget to mention that Screencastify does work if you're offline. So let's say that you have students that you're wanting to create Google Slides and then do a voiceover. If they do not have internet access at home, it will record it and it will save it in their offline um, Google Drive account until they get back online. Hey, Stella. That is awesome. I, I didn't even know that. And we do have um, a question for you in the okay. chat, and we also have a comment for Russ Hockenberry. He's from JCPS. He said that your sessions are always packed at KISTE, and believe me, they Thank you. Uh, one question that we have is, can you show those shortcuts again? Absolutely. And there are more. These are my favorite ones. So you have Alt, Shift, and R to start and stop your recordings. I use that one almost every time that I use this extension. Alt, Shift, and P helps you to um, pause your video and resume it. So sometimes you get a tickle in your throat, you need to get a drink of water, your internet's being super slow, whatever, you can pause and then restart. The rest of these are really awesome, too. <laughs> but those are my two favorites. Stella, is there any editing uh, capability like you just mentioned where maybe I had a little cough or something in my throat? And uh, is there any editing available in Screencastify? There is. So if you go to your recordings, you've listened back, you want to go in and edit, you can. I don't want to hear myself. Um, open in editor. And it takes it a little while, not a little while, but a few minutes to fire up. And on my free trial if I'm in my um, if I don't have the paid version but right now everybody does so inside of here you can crop you can cut out you can add text boxes um, and it's really super simple to use after you get started in there we yesterday we talked about I know the team will be able to reiterate this a little better than I but yesterday we talked about how it's good to let our kids during these days know the human aspect that we have for that culture and uh, for them to see uh, a dog barking or another kid running by. So I want to make sure that those teachers out there know, don't stress about the background. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 100%. Like most of us have pets or kids. And let me tell you, there, there's Thomas the train all over my house. Like it looks like Thomas the Train lives in my house. There's so many toys in it for it. Um, there's nothing to be ashamed of. Just get out there and do your best. And, you know, we all really do hate the sound of our voices. That's just something that after you start making a few videos, you're just like, eh, I sound just like everybody else with a Southern accent. Or <laughs> if you don't have a Southern accent, you know, whatever. But, um, yeah, it's something you get more and more used to. And Stella, I will reiterate on that. Um, 
you know, the only people, the only person that doesn't know what you sound like is yourself. So, um, you know, don't stress about that because kids listen to you every day. So they don't have any uh, issues with hearing your voice. Yes, 100%. Mm-hmm. And I'd also like to really um, talk about how amazing the capability is to do it offline because we do have those students that don't have um, access. So that's a great resource to be able to provide for those students that um, you know might not be able to get that lot, but will be able to get that eventually. So that's really powerful for them. So- I agree. And one thing that I thought about is I know there has to be a company out there somewhere with lots and lots of money and they have to be watching this right now. If they would like to supply us with some flash drives for our students so we can mail those to them and save our videos, that would be great. Um, Some of us may have some of those laying around, so that's another option for our students with remote learning. And those even those videos can be short with just a simple with uh, if we're pairing this with Google Classroom with just a simple re-explanation of those little um those directions that those those kids need so i love this because then they have that we call it power of pause and then they can say wait what did she ask me to do so i love that it's awesome yeah and even like right now we're all about nti and remote learning but when you teach second graders or third graders you have to repeat your instruction every five minutes or even quicker because it's a lot of information all at once but if they can rewind it it's going to save your voice and it's going to help them not have to wait on you second or third graders we talk about middle schoolers come on i know that's what that's where i came from um yeah they need it too Well, welcome, Rosalind. We're so glad to have you. We got you popped in. We didn't even get to say hello. Hi, thank you. Um, I'm excited to be here. I'm really excited about Edpuzzle. Um, It's one of the tools that I really like to use with my kids. And so I'm really excited to share that with other educators as well. So thank you for having me. We're really excited to uh, learn all about all about Edpuzzle from you. So, um, Stella, if you're done, if you're done with your part, then Rosalind, go ahead and take yeah. a and learn all about it. And before Rosalind starts, uh, we do have one question from our YouTube live, and that is, can you use a document camera with this so a teacher could share her real time writing with the students? With Screencastify, you absolutely can. So. When, is it okay if I share my screen again, Roslyn? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, when you are in your screen that you want to record, you click on your little icon here. And instead of clicking browser tab or desktop, you want to click this web camera button. And when you do your record, instead of it showing your screen, it is going to show your beautiful right there <laughs> that are recording your voice <laughs> and that is how you do it and it will save it exactly the same way as it does your desktop or your browser tab and so the, like if you connect to that document camera it's just going to show that document camera too so it's just an added yeah. camera perfect true yes thank you All right, are we ready to get started on Edpuzzle? Yes, I wanna see how this mashes together too. I've always loved Edpuzzle. It's just a really neat tool to be able to blend that learning with some of the interactivity. So I can't wait to see what you got. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you. Um, Let's see. So, um, if, so just gaining access to Edpuzzle, you would go to edpuzzle.com. Um, I always sign in with Google just because um, I use Google for everything, Google Classroom, um, all of those things. So it makes it really easy to integrate with Google as well. Um, so you would sign in with Google. Um, on the slides, I've got instruction screenshots for 
pretty much everything um, in terms of like how to sync with Google Classroom, uh, the different types of things that you can do with Edpuzzle. But I thought I would just kind of take you through that process on my own account. Um, so I've got the instructions all here, but I will just go ahead and go to Edpuzzle. Um, so the first thing you would want to do if you use Google Classroom is to sync with Google Classroom. So I'm logged into my account here and my classes is in the top right corner. So I'll click on that. And then you can see that on the left hand side that I've got classes already created here. Um, but if you would like to add a new class, you would click add new class. Um, you can create one that is not in your Google Classroom. So if you were to do that, you would give it a name, maybe give it a description, um, but you can also add new classes from Google Classroom. And what I love about this is that, um, like I have classes you can see here that I have not imported from Google Classroom, but I could still do that on my own time if I wanted to. So I'll show you how that works. I'm gonna click on this class here and then import classes and it will add that class to my Edpuzzle classes right here. Now, oh, sorry, that I love how easy it is to do that. So if you do use Google Classroom, like it's it does it for you. So that's why I try to tell my teachers, like it's so streamlined, like it's so awesome to use. If you do use Google Classroom, it just makes it that much easier. Yes, absolutely. It takes no time at all. And you can do multiple classes at a time. Like you don't have to just import one class. When I imported my AP seminar classes, I just clicked all four of them, hit import, and they were all just there. So it was super easy to do that. Um, in terms of finding videos, so on the home page, and after my classes, I just clicked here on Edpuzzle to come back to the home page. So you'll see on the left hand side that you have lots of options for channels. There are Edpuzzle videos, YouTube, Khan Academy, TED Talks, um, Crash Course videos. So, I mean, you just have so many options here. And that's one of the things that I love is I know that later we'll talk a little bit about how to app smash with Screencastify and Edpuzzle, but if you just don't have time to make a video or um, there's already something that you've used before in your classes that you know you would like to use again, but you just want to do it in a different way, these channels are here for you to pull previously created videos. Um, so I'm just going to show you, I'm going to click on YouTube and I'm going to click this um, environmental matter exchange video. I haven't watched it, but we'll, we'll go with it. Um, so I'm going to click on this video. And when I do that, I can play the video here. It's about eight minutes, so I won't torture you with that. Um, but you can go ahead and just assign it if you want to, um, or you can choose to edit the video. And typically, I don't just assign a video without putting in my own types of questions or whatever, because usually there's something I want my students getting from the video. So you can click edit here. And on the edit screen, there's there are several things you can do. You can cut the video. So this, I said, I think it was about an eight minute video. You can actually cut this. Maybe you only want to use the first four minutes of the video. You can drag, oops, it's probably going to start playing. Okay. You can drag this blue thing from the right over to maybe I want it to be about three and a half minutes long. So you can do that. Um, or and I'm going to pull this back to where it originally was. If you decided that you actually only wanted the first three minutes and the last two minutes, you can also do that as well. So I am going to click add cut and you'll see it added a cut right here on my screen. So I can pull this side here. Maybe I want about two minutes and 15 seconds here. And then I want 
the last, I don't know, minute or so here. I won't play it since, since it would be a little bit confusing, but what will happen here is once it gets to the end of this, it will automatically jump over here. So you can cut that video any way that you want to do that, which is really, really nice. Um, I've, I've had videos that I want to use in my classes that I just didn't feel like the middle portion of it was all that relevant to what we were doing, but the beginning and the end was. And so it's really nice to be able to cut that video for whatever your needs are in your own classroom or for your own students. Um, anytime you do that, you want to make sure that um, it's saving automatically. Typically it does, but I just always like to double check. Um, so it should save automatically. You can also do a voiceover in your videos. So this might be important. For example, there are several videos on here that just have almost like a cartoon where they've got text that pops up on the screen with some background music, but maybe you want to include your own commentary there because a one size fits all video doesn't necessarily work for everybody. Um, so being able to include your own voice in that is important. And I loved what y'all were saying earlier about being able to show the humanity of us as teachers in our own homes be, for them to be able to hear your voice on this pre-created video is really nice as well. Um, so to do that, you would hit start recording here. Um, and it's super, it's super easy to do that as well. Um, the other thing that I love about Edpuzzle is the ability to embed questions into the video. And you have a lot of options here for your questions. You can do multiple choice questions. Um, and again, I haven't watched this video, so I have no idea what it says. So I'm going to make up some random questions. What is your favorite food? Okay. Um, so you can, it gives you automatically two answer options, but you can add more if you want to. Um, and maybe salad and chocolate. Um, over here, you'll see the check mark and the X. So you can, I'm just gonna say salad is the wrong answer here and chocolate is the right answer. So when you do this, you um when your kids answer that question they will be able to get the response right away to know whether they scored correctly or not but you also get that information in your own like when you click on your classes and on your students you'll be able to see which students got which answers right and wrong um, so you would want to make sure you hit save there and then um you can add additional questions okay so i'm going to hit edit um and then i'm going to add an open-ended question here now these your um ed puzzle will not score these so you would have to go back and manually score these on your own but it you would be able to see those responses it just wouldn't score them for you and then another option for question or not necessarily questions but you can embed notes into the video. So I really like this as well because I might choose a video and I think they do a good job of explaining it, but maybe it relates to something else that I've talked to my students about in the classroom and I wanna maybe make them stop, read this note so that they know, oh yeah, we did talk about this. Maybe this video is just talking about it in a different way, or maybe I wanna make a connection to something that they've studied before, perhaps in another content area or whatever it may be. Um, one thing you can do with these notes, you have the option to do audio recording for notes again, so your students can hear your voice, even if we are far apart from each other currently. So Rosalind, that's, that's huge for our students with special needs that are on their IP says that they need a reader. So that is huge. That's love that. Love that. Yeah, while I'm absolutely. while I've got you going, um, so we had a question from Sherry Mann. And, um, can students re-listen to the sh to the show before having to answer a question? She knows that previously in the past students could only listen to it one time before having to answer. Do you know about that? You know, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that, but I do know if they get the question wrong, there is an option that says watch again. 
So I don't know if they can watch it again before they answer, but I know that if they get it wrong, they can go back and rewatch it. Awesome. Also, we do also have another question from Sherry. Uh, will Ed Puzzle allow students to use closed caption, um, slow down speed for YouTube videos? And in the past, um, they could not. So is that possible now to use closed um, caption? No, I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Can I add again? Uh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Um, sorry, Roslyn. <laughs> You can rewind, so okay. you can't go back. You just can't fast forward. And I'm on Edpuzzle now as a student with my daughter's account. Closed captions are now available on there, and you can translate those into a few different languages. It does not have the option, it doesn't appear to me, uh, for slowing down the video. Okay. What would be cool, too, is if they could pair Google Translate or another translating um, device so that you could help with that too. So, um, and I, I would not be able to translate anything. So, <laughs> that'd be interesting to see. So. Yeah. <laughs> I do like that it's more than just, you know, watch the video, answer the questions. Like, it has way more powerful capabilities than just kind of an assessment tool. So, um, there's, many things that you can do with it besides that. And I do really appreciate that. Yes, I love that too. Um, and yes, of course it could be a really good assessment tool, but especially right now, I just want my kids to be able to hear me talking through the work that they're doing. And some of the videos that I've posted for my students right now, I don't even put questions in them. Um, or I might just put like a little voice note in there just so that they can hear me kind of talking through that process. Um, so sometimes maybe you don't want any questions in there and that's totally fine too. Um, but you can also see, and I'll show you this in just a second, you can see if students have watched the videos or what their progress is. And I really love that too, um, because I can kind of monitor my students, not in a way that's like, oh, I gotcha, but as a, oh, well, you didn't finish that bit video, go back and check out the last couple minutes of that and come back if you have any additional questions. Um, so it's a way to kind of keep up with what have they done, what have they not done, so I can better answer their questions via email or Google Meet or whatever it may be. Um, so assigning these videos to students, I'm gonna click finish here. And then you can, um, it will bring you to this screen and then you can hit assign here. You can choose the number of, or which classes you can assign it to multiple classes at the same time. So I'm not gonna click that one, but um, I'll click this one here um, and hit assign. Um, you can choose a due date. You can prevent them from skipping ahead, I think was mentioned earlier. Um, you can choose to turn that off or on. I always leave it on. Um, and then turn on the closed captions is also an option there. Um, this particular Edpuzzle, I don't have connected to Google Classroom, but uh, I'll show you here. If I click here, this one is connected to Google Classroom. You can see this icon here. Um, you can choose to post it to Google Classroom and it will go directly there. Um, the one thing that I don't super love about that is that when I click post to classroom, I can go ahead and assign it, but I can't assign a topic for it. I keep everything organized in topics on my Google Classroom account. And so that's the one thing that, like you have to go back to the Google Classroom page, edit the assignment and give it a topic that way. Um, but it's still easier to go ahead and just post it on Classroom like that. So I'm not gonna assign it to that one. I'm gonna do this one and hit assign. How easy is that to be able to do multiple classes at a time and not have to go back in to each one? I love that, yay. Yes, absolutely. Um, so when you are, so I'm gonna show you um, how to test your student progress, assess them, all of that. So I'm gonna, I came back to my Edpuzzle homepage. So I'm gonna go to my classes and then I'm going to click on this Edpuzzle NTI practice class 
class. Um, I, I created an open account for this just so I could show you. I didn't want to show you my current classes because it's got confidential, you know, student names and that sort of thing. So just bear with me for just a second. I created this random, um, this random Edpuzzle account. So I'm going to click on this writing a claim assignment. You can see here, I've got two students who have turned it in. Okay. I have not looked at the answers yet. So it says two new answers. So I'm going to click on this assignment. And because this was an open account, um, it did not require students to have a login. Basically what I did was I opened this Ed puzzle class in an incognito window and I made up some answers here just as an example. Um, but if you are syncing your classes with Google Classroom, it will have your students names on there. Um, so don't worry about this with silly Sarah and John Doe. Like if you're syncing it with Google Classroom, their names will be there. So um, I'm going to click John Doe here and it will show for example, this was a multiple choice question. So it tells me that he got this correct. I can leave a comment here. Great job, John. And that will go to him as well. Um, there is a constructed response here. The last statement was not a good claim because it was he just wrote bad with a question mark, which might tell me that he doesn't really know why it wasn't a good claim. And I may leave a comment here. Let's set up an appointment to discuss this further. No, Rosalind, that makes me think of something. So if you checked in and saw a student missed this question, we know we have those question anal analyzing those different questions. You could even put a link to another video that re-discusses what that um, content that student needed to revisit. So absolutely, you could put links in the comments as well. Um, and then I'll hit an X there just so I've marked that he did not get that one correct, right? And these are automatically marked if it was a multiple choice, if you assigned whether it was a correct or false answer. So um, those are already there. And then you can go directly to the next student. And you can also see here which ones they got right and which ones they got wrong. This one is red because Sarah got this wrong. She got this one correct, this one correct. This is gray because it was the constructed response. So you have to manually go in and give it a response. Um, so again, you can leave comments. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to give her the correct check mark there. Hey, I do want to add right there um, where it says number of times students watched each, each section of your video. That's pretty powerful. So like you can tell, you know, this student watched it a couple of times or this student only watched it once. So it kind of gives you that um, information on, you know, how seriously maybe your students are taking it if they're having to go back and watch or how much trouble they may be having. So it kind of gives you that feedback there. I like that. Yes, absolutely. And one of, one of the things that, so after this final question, you've still got about 30 or 40 seconds before the video is over, it will not allow the student, because I prevented skipping, it will not allow the student to turn in the responses until the video is over. So um, that's really nice. I also noticed, and because I don't use Edpuzzle as a student very much, I thought this was interesting. Um, when I was doing the student version of Edpuzzle, I minimized the Edpuzzle tab and it stopped the video. So it wouldn't continue, um, which is really nice because it kind of forces them to listen to it. Um, now you could pull the tab out into a brand new window of its own and leave it open kind of in the background and it will still play. Um, but if they minimize the tab or minimize the window, the video will stop and it will not give them credit for listening to the video. And I remember when I used it in the classroom that when you uh, even went to another tab and were active on that, it would pause it. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So they just have to have it open for it to not pause and then um, if they are inactive on a tab, I think that was just, I was just trying to organize that in my brain a little bit more. So. Yes, no, that is correct. Um, you can even reset student progress here um, if you want them to go back and do it again. 
Um, you don't necessarily have to do that, but you can. And then you can download grades, you can delete the assignment. Um, Edpuzzle currently right now is free unlimited for teachers because of school closings and that sort of thing. But the free accounts typically, I believe, I'm not 100% sure on this, I believe the free accounts typically only let you have 20 videos. Um, and so I found myself deleting assignments that were much older that I didn't really need the information anymore. Um, but you can download the grades before you delete the assignment so that you have access to those. Rosalind, I wonder if there's a way to archive those so that you don't have to remake them later on with the, with the free version. I'm not sure, but uh, can you download these? Wait, you've got them in your drive, right? So then you don't have to right. worry about that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are there any questions about Edpuzzle? I don't see any on the chat, do you ladies? I think you did a pretty amazing job and were thorough and your instructions were so easy to follow. I just learned like 15 things, so thank you. Oh, good. <laughs> and I used this when I was in the classroom. We don't have any questions, I don't think, in the chat. Okay. Yeah. Let's uh, smash them together. Yeah. Uh -huh. Let's see. All right. Rosalind, do you want to, do you have any ideas? Well, um, no, I will say this has been the using Screencastify and Edpuzzle together has been huge for me, especially over the last several days. Um, Stella, you did an awesome job going over Screencastify and um, it just has so many capabilities that I've really I've had a lot of success so far using both of them together. So I think it's it's a wonderful a wonderful collaboration there on those two tools. So I agree. And for the audience, I'm gonna share out some things that I just came up with. I just have a few suggestions to share with you all. But if you have any ideas on the stream and YouTube, please feel free to share out those ideas so we can all learn from one another. So let me share my screen again. Okay, and all right, going back to the slide deck. I put that Screencastify and Edpuzzle are better together, which when you hear one, you automatically think that it is amazing. Hopefully by the end of this, you will agree with that. But here are some ways that you can use them together. So we have reading circles inside of classrooms. We have teachers who are reading chapter books or picture books or whatever. Read a story to your students. Use that web camera and show them pages, show them whatever, make sure that you have copyright, um, like you've contacted the author and got a thumbs up on it. <laughs> a lot of them are, but read the story to your students and then put that video inside of Edpuzzle and embed questions as you go along. I think that could be very powerful. Um, our parents, like for the most part, they're, the content they're struggling the most with is math because math has changed. It's not taught the same way that we learned it when we were in school. So show the students a question and have them make inferences before you solve each step. Have them guess what they think the next step in that problem is gonna be. You can also gauge for understanding by having students solve a similar problem. Um, so like if you had an equation and you solved it at the end, have them do something similar. A lot of us need to get our content out to our students. So we already have PowerPoints or Google Slides created. Go ahead and digitize your lesson, record yourself, going over it just like your students were there and embed those questions to engage the students in the learning. Because if I had to watch a 10 minute video over my most beloved content science, it's really hard for me to pay attention for 10 minutes without trying to engage with whatever I'm trying to learn. And then you can also show instructions on how to complete an NCI assignment on different sites. We were not prepared for this because it came on so suddenly that we may have had, we may have ideas on certain sites that we want our kids to be able to create on. We want to see them and how they're using um, new things. For this, you can show them instructions and then have 
questions to go along with to make sure that they're understanding. So with that, those were just a few that I came up with there quickly, but please, please, please share how you're using these tools together on the Kentucky Go Digital hashtag. We want to see them. And that was it. <laughs> That's what I got. I want to make sure that we reiterate this for Philip West, who um, had a question. He just joined it with us. He asked him just to make sure kids did not need to make an extra account that when we, uh, when you export that class from Google Classroom, their account is automatically tied. Is that right? Yes. I that think so. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, guys, I mean, so much information, um, a lot to take in. I think you have um, opened people's eyes to the possibilities with Edpuzzle, with Screencastify, and how we can make it the most, especially of these coming weeks um, with NTI. So, um, Brandy, um, we just want to thank all you guys for, for tuning in. Brandy, can you uh, close us out? Yeah. Um, thanks, Stella and Rosalind. Um, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, thank you. Please um, feel free to share this video once it posts to our YouTube channel, let other people know about it. Um, our YouTube channel is PayWagO Digital. If you subscribe, then you're gonna you can set it up to get notifications for all the amazing videos we're going to be rolling out over the next few weeks to support teachers during NTI days. You can also follow us on Twitter at KYGO Digital. Um, that is where we are all out there right now. We're creating these things and we're sharing them freely, right? We've got to connect with each other right now, which is all in the true spirit of KYGO Digital. Tomorrow's episode, we're going to have Dana Pearsall, who's going to talk about Cami. Um, I know that my high school daughter is wearing out Cami right now, um, doing some PDF annotations. So that one's at Thursday, March 19th, 11 o'clock, ladies. 11 o'clock with Dana tomorrow, Dana Pierce off from Washington County. So hopefully we see you back then. And until then, um, don't forget to be creating, connecting and sharing with all of us. Elaine, I, did you have something? Yeah, I had one question. Well, it's actually Rachel Wingo. She said for students without Google Classroom, can you use both to upload videos to Facebook, class tag and other social media? I wasn't able to answer that question. So I know for sure that you can share these on social media for Screencastify uh, because you can post it to YouTube and just share that link. You can also download those videos and upload them directly into whatever social media platform that you want. Oslin, do you know about Edpuzzle? You know, I wasn't a hundred percent sure. So, and I may still be wrong, but as soon as I heard that question, I went over to my Edpuzzle account and there is a share assignment option. Um, and you can, there's a link, an assignment link, and it says provide your student students with direct access. Um, there's also an embed code as well. Um, and it, it says embed this video on your LMS. So I, Make the assumption, although I'm not 100% sure, that you could do that with Edpuzzle as well. So we'll just ask Rachel to uh, see if she can try it and then tweet it out to the hashtag so that we can all learn from her. And, or we may have somebody out there who's a Schoology or a Canvas user who can let us know and then we'll, we'll retweet it and get it out there. Thanks, ladies. Hope to see everybody tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye.